Hello, everyone. My name is Katerina Bausi, and I'm a solutions engineer for Cambridge Intelligence. So today, I'm going to speak to you about Twitter trolls. I will be presenting to you the techniques and key findings of an application that aims to reveal the life of a Twitter troll using Neo4j. Over the next 10 minutes, I want to introduce you to a different way to visualize your graphs going from nodes and links to an approach we're calling visual timeline analytics. So when I say graph visualizations, what images come to mind? Probably something looking like this. We're all familiar with the node link approach to graph visualization. It's a fantastic way to understand graph data. It's flexible, it's scalable, it's instantly intuitive, even if your end users have never worked with graph data before. But while this approach can help us see what, where, and how, it can be difficult to understand when. That's where visual timeline analytics come in. What we are seeing here is a screenshot of an interactive timeline application built with our chronograph toolkit. In it, time passes from left to right, and it's populated with entities. In this particular example, the people that exchanged phone calls and events, the phone calls that, ex that were exchanged between them. As you can see, this is a great way to explore time-based graph data to see how connected events unfold over time. Here, we can see the transition between the two graph visualization models. Our familiar nodes become timeline entities, the actors of our data set, and the links connecting them become events, the actions perform performed by the actors, either in a specific time or over a particular period of time. The timeline model is just as flexible and scalable as the node link approach. Timelines and low link charts also work seamlessly together to provide infect effective insights to our end users. Now, to show you the power of visual timeline analytics, I'm going to focus on an example we created for fun. We'll look at a Neo4j Twitter dataset and ask, what is the daily routine of a Twitter troll? But before we jump into this, I want to basically spend a couple of minutes to discuss the architecture of the application. In the backend, what we have done is that we have initialized the Neo4j sandbox available by Ben Popkin and NBC News. It contains 400 troll accounts, 20,000 hashtags, and 200,000 tweets linked to Russian attempts to influence the 2016 presidential election. The backend controller is created using Node.js, and the connection between the backend controller and the sandbox is established via a Neo4j driver. The data from the backend flow to the front end, where they are translated into the appropriate format before they are loaded into the chronograph timeline component and the regraph chart component. This translation is more uh, well presented over here, where we are looking at the data present in the Neo4j schema. And this is basically translated, migrated to events containing the information and timestamps of tweets, and entities split and color coded into trolls, mentioned users, and hashtags. And now it's time for the live demo of the application. So this is the dashboard we have built for this use case, and it consists of two main components, as you can see. On the left-hand side, we've got chronograph, the chronograph timeline, which is the most predominant component of the visualization. And on the right, we have a dynamic info panel that controls the main timeline visualization and also adds additional information on demand whenever we select a chronograph entity. As we mentioned previously, the timeline visualization consists of entities. You see over here the elements spanning across the X axis and events, the elements spanning across the Y axis on a particular timestamp. Given the amount of data present in the visualization, it is a lot more convenient to present the information in a group way upfront to avoid overwhelming the end user. 
And that is why the different troll accounts that form our entities over here are grouped by their various time zones, the time zones of the devices as they were presented within the data set. We also have groups for the mentioned users and the hashtags used. The events of the visualization, of course, are also aggregated into a heat map, allowing us to immediately spot concentrations of activity. So basically, as the troll tree, so sorry, as the troll tweets increase, so does the opacity of the heat map cells. The darker the cell means that the troll is more busy. Red and teal cells represent that in this particular uh, moment in time, we have a high concentration of activity containing mentioned users or hashtags. And if we are color coding them using this yellow color, that means both of these elements exist in that particular cell. Now, even from this high level kind of visualization, we can spot uh, trends of activity kind of immediately because up front we can see that there is a vertical band of data starting around this time, July 2016. We start to suspect that even though the troll accounts had lain dormant for years, they are now exhibiting some sort of activity. What is also surprising is that the accounts stopped being active around the same time in November 2016, the time of the election. But now let's try to understand the troll activity on a lower level. And let's also try to see if there are any patterns on their daily communications. To do that, we will use one of Chronograph's metrics called scale wrapping, which basically allows us to change the default scales that are present at the top of the timeline. And by default, what they do is that they represent the entire time horizon of our data set to focus on a daily view that basically focuses on the hours of the day each event took place. Now, what we can also do is try to look in more detail on a particular group of time zones. We can focus on the Eastern Canada time zone over here and basically see a particular event of interest. Let's focus on a particular underlying account. We can pick this in random. Let's say, for instance, uh, this one cuts our eye. Let's say Dorothy uh, Bell is the one that we want to focus on and expand and look forward for this particular event, for this particular um, entity present in our data set. Right up here, from the beginning, when we focus on Dorothy, we can see that this is a very busy account. We can see that there is a continuous stream of tweets and retweets associated with this particular user. user. And it's also safe to assume by just quickly looking at it that probably this user never sleeps quite contradictory to her bio populated over here, claiming that this particular user is a conservative wife and a mother. And a really useful example is present right below the additional information retrieved from the Twitter data set. And over here, what we can see is the entire activity of Dorothy presented on a graph. What we can see is the different trolls, uh, the, sorry, the different tweets the, that she has uh, posted, the different hashtags that she has used over time, and of course, the different users she has mentioned within her tweets. Going back to the full view of uh, the data set and looking and unwrapping basically the data to be um, containing the full uh, amount of all the information exactly when it has occurred. What we can also do is pinpoint different events of interest within our data set. We know that for a fact that there are two interesting events and what the question that we can ask in this particular scenario is what kind of hashtags were present during these times in our data set? Are there any particular hashtag trends in our uh, data set, in our visualization. Using uh, the powerful marquee selection of uh, chronograph in this particular example, what we can do actually is zoom into the different areas of interest, zoom into these um, times of interest present in our data set and focus on this one in more uh, detail.
zooming on the 22nd of March, the day of this particular attack and basically expanding the tags area, we can see that, of course, there is some situation, there is some concentration of events associated with particular tweets. And we can infer that basically by showing that the groups, the tweets are pointing to certain groups at all times. Opening up back the previous suspicious account, we can see that Dorothy on that particular day actually started using quite inflammatory uh, hashtags in her tweets, which is basically done in order to probably move the public opinion and so on. And of course, the end users of this application can continue to investigate the numerous patterns that arise in this big data set and draw additional conclusions on top of that. This was an example of the numerous use cases that benefit from timeline analytics visualizations. Of course, there are many more areas that can actually use this to infer more um, information, more underlying suspicious activity within them. These are cybersecurity, cryptocurrencies, law enforcement, and fraud detection. The toolkits that we use for today's example were Chronograph, our latest uh, product, Regraph for uh, the chart component. And of course, if you're interested in trying this out on your end, of course, you can contact me directly or visit the Cambridge Intelligence website. Thank you very much for your attention and your time. And hopefully I will be able to answer some of your questions afterwards in the Q&A session. Thank you.